Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rocket Craft Season 2. And in this episode, we've gone back in time by a couple of months because there was a few important things that I got up to on the server that I never had the chance to actually show you. And then 1.19 happened, and then my schedule kind of just went out the window, and work was crazy, and yeah. But now we are catching up on one of these projects that I was up to before the update. And I've enlisted the help of Luke and Sarah, and they have been helping me wrangle a panda into this hole within a hole over in the, uh, the gaming district. So yes, there's a hole within a hole. Uh, this is back when the uh, the gaming district was in its infancy. There wasn't a lot here yet. There was mainly just Teach's Leaf Spleef and then this thing that I'm working on now. And I've just got a few more redstone bits to finish up and a little bit more digging. But basically, we have brought back uh, a fan favourite from last season's gaming district. But of course, we're trying to put a different type of twist on it because... It's no fun just doing the same thing over and over every time, you know, um, the same game over and over. It, it's nice to change things up a little bit from time to time, and that's what I'm attempting to do with this game here. So, um, yes, Sarah's now in the hole with the panda as well. I don't know why. Sarah, what are you doing in that hole with that panda? You don't need to be in there. Uh, either way. Right, so uh, I have a lot of work to do, but the main flushing mechanism is now in place. It all seems to be working, so that's that's good, and uh, we can get on with tarting this thing up. And that is exactly what I've done, and also, yes, I'm tagged at this point in time. Um, I can't even remember who tagged me at this point, but uh, yeah... Oh, it was a few months ago, I can't remember, but um, there is a very worried looking panda in here and he is very right to be looking so worried because he's going to be the new focus of our game and uh, of course that game last season was Water Sheep Down and this time we're going to try a panda but uh, it's not been straightforward, not at all, but as you can see uh, we've got our little coloured uh, sections here, so you know, like you know, you raise the panda up, it wanders into a different coloured area, and then whoever was betting on that area wins the diamonds from everyone else. Uh, it was so much fun last season, but we just couldn't not bring it back. But like I say, we've tried to put a different spin on it and make it a little bit more uh, different than just having a sheep in there. Uh, so this time we're going to try. <laughs> I say try, we're going to try to get the pandas to cooperate in here. There's plenty to choose from. Okay, so a little bit more time later and we've done some more work and that panda, I swear, it hasn't even moved this entire time. <laughs> it's still on its back, playing with its paws. Um, but anyway, I have done some more work and we've now got a glass roof type floor on this thing that you can walk across where you're placing your bets. And I've got some walls around the edges of it as well. And it's looking quite fancy, as I'm sure you will all agree. Now, one challenge that I have had while doing this thing is, of course, water sheep down using a sheep. Sheep only have like a one by one hitbox. They can fit down a one by one hole, no problem. Um, but pandas are not. As I was uh, digging it all out and then Teach pointed out to me, he's like, yeah, you know, like pandas have a like a big hitbox. They're like two by two. I was like, oh, damn. Um, so I had to adapt that with the design, and hence why the uh, the actual area down there is a little bit wider than it was before. It used to be five blocks wide, but now it's six blocks wide. And of course, we've now had to make this monstrosity. A, you know, just a one block double piston extender is is pretty straightforward, but this. This monstrosity here is a, a two by two double piston extender, and I'm just testing it out. And I'm not sure that's actually gone up as far as I want it to go up. Um, bear with me, bear with me. No, no, that has not worked. Um, I mean, it would be enough, the panda would be able to walk out of there, but. <laughs> No, no. Let, let's try. Let's try something else then. 
Uh, oops, I didn't mean to break the block below there. And if we change that for glass, that means the redstone signal can go through both sides and it should be able to power both sets of pistons this time instead of getting cut off. I hope. Uh, I mean, like, if you know, this is, this is me we're talking about. I'm not a, exactly a redstone genius, but that should now all link up. And I need more glass. But we're going to have to do that on both parts because we need, yeah, we, we, that would do one half of the pistons. We need the other half as well. And like so. We don't need to do that last block there, do we? Do we? Do we? No. 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 That, that would do. But then I'm going to have to do it on the other side as well. I'm pretty sure because yeah, on, I don't think it's a thing on on Java, but on Bedrock, glass allows the uh, the redstone signal to to travel through it, which is really helpful in some situations. And I keep destroying things. I don't mean to break because someone's got a haste beacon in this area. And uh, yeah, they need some delay on them. The old repeaters there. Now that should work, like fingers crossed, if I push this button now, the T flip flop, yes, yes, look at that, it has, it has done the job, we did redstone, yay, um, yeah, double, a 2 by 2 double piston extender on bedrock is not exactly what I would call straightforward, but we managed to muddle through and we got the job done. Even the T flip flop on bedrock is a pain in the butt. I mean, yes, and it retracts as well. So that is all working great. That's that's really good. Like I say, it's a bit of a monstrosity. Uh, most most things you know that you can do on Java, you can do on bedrock. It just won't look as elegant and it won't be as compact. But anyway, I digress. We are now. Going to take a little break from that because we've been distracted by our good friend, the Wandering Trader. And uh, and Sarah is still in the area and uh, he's got some beacons for sale, some beacon mini blocks. So I've gone and crafted up some quickly and Sarah is going to... No! What are you doing here? No one invited you! Uh, if they get killed by my thorns armour, does that count as me killing them? Hmm... I don't know. Let, let's let them kill themselves and we'll find out in a second. Okay, yeah, so it does. It does totally count as my kill if they get killed by my Thorns armor. But anyway, Sarah's bought the, uh, the Wandering Traders mini blocks and uh, where are they? Jukeboxes. Uh, green concrete. Give up the goods. Oh, yeah. Beacon mini blocks. Gorgeous. These are very useful for a lot of things. Anyway. Back to the task at hand, we've got a panda in our contraption and it seems to all be working. It all seems to be going so smoothly so far that I'm, I'm a little bit worried because everything seems to be working as I wanted it to work. So, oh, hang on. Is that right? Yeah, so the, the flushing mechanism should be on while the panda is down. And then uh, the water should go away when the panda comes up, which is exactly what I want. So if I link that up now and just link this last little bit up, so we, we're going to take the button away and we're going to hook up the redstone to that top button there so that we can do it from, um, from up above. Can I do that? No. No, I can just place, place a block. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes like the simplest redstone is like, uh, there we go. Right, well that will that will do the trick there because that will power that or depower that torch and that will set the whole thing in motion. So, uh, we need to get rid of that scaffolding in a sec. But if we press this button, it should retract all the water and push the panda up. It works. Woo! Uh, come on then, panda. What are you gonna do? Which section are you going to go in? First test. Is it going to be orange? 
Is it going to be purple? He's thinking long and hard about this. It's an important decision. Like, what, what colour are you going to go in? A any time today. Come on, do something. Come on. He's not even made it out of the diamonds yet. You've got a long way to go to get to that tripwire. What what are you thinking about? Hello. What is the panda doing? Oh, oh, it's moving a different direction. It's slow as hell, isn't it? It is slow as hell. <gasps> hey! It went into one! I don't know if that is because I came down and the player makes it move a lot more. But, um, yeah, that was painfully slow to start with. Right, well, um, I guess we'll put it back in its hole. Bye. It should just flop in there, no problem. Round and round it goes. Yes, down it goes. Okay, well, that is a little bit on the slow side, um, I must say, compared to the shape. So, maybe we'll try a different type of panda in the hole. So I have actually saved a playful panda that I found a little while ago. And here's a top Minecraft tip for you kids. If you put Sarah's name on something, it's not going to get messed with. Because nobody messes with Sarah's stuff. So that's why I put Sarah's uh, panda on that sign there. <laughs> right, come on then you. Oh yeah, you're too fat to fit through there, aren't you? Uh, oh, oh, he's feeling frisky. Now, if you would just like to follow me this way, please, will you do a roly-poly, or were you just going to me meander along in at your own pace? Yeah, pandas are not the fastest, are they? Let's be honest. But I'm trying to find a use for them in this game. They're kind of one of those pretty useless mobs. Like, you're not going to be farming them for their, for their bamboo drop, that's for sure. Uh... Right, okay, we've, we've got him back to the game. In your plop. And down with your little worried looking friend. And yeah, there we go. We've got two pandas in the hole. Excellent. They are now mine forever. But anyway, uh, let's try and see what exactly this playful one is going to do when we bring him up. Right, here we go. Night time like the present. It's already doing its roly poly thing. And is it gonna. Is it gonna do anything? Oh, the worried one runs around a lot more when there's a player around here down with it. But other than that, it just sort of mooches about not doing an awful lot at all. The playful one doesn't seem too bothered about the player. So. I think your time is up, Mr. Worried Panda. I'm sorry. Bye. Oh, I got a panda head from it, though. Yay. No, I can't take the tag head off, can I? Oh, never mind. Right, the playful panda is going to be what I'm going to try and focus on then. So, let's wash him back down into his hole. I like the idea of it doing this like roly-poly thing. It's kind of like a pinball. Really, look at it go. Look at this bit. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Look at it. What are you doing, Panda? And again. It's like a little hamster in a wheel. It just <laughs> Wee <laughs> What an idiot. What a stupid animal. What a stupid mob. It just oh, they're just dumb. Look at it. What is the point of this thing? Minecraft? Why? Anyway, um, let's bring it back up and see what it does. Oh, 
it stopped doing its spinny thing, its spin dash, I'll call you Sonic. Are you going to do anything? Are you going to go somewhere? Hello? Oh, oh, well, I mean, it sort of did what I wanted it to do. It was a lot quicker than the the other panda type. So maybe this will work, maybe. Oh, don't be a, don't be a, no. Get down in the hole. Right, okay. That could be an issue though. If it starts doing its like roly poly thing to try and not go back in the hole, that could add extra time. Yeah, that's right. You you get all your roly polies out now, mate. Right, so with the panda in place, it is now time to I swear this thing hasn't moved this entire episode. It's just been sat there on its back looking up at the sky. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. Did I did I disturb you? Didn't realize how gray their tummies were. Anyway, we are now going to build a ginormous build around this thing because we've got to make it safe and we've got to make it mob proof and spawn proof for a while. People are in here gambling their diamonds. That's right. Back back on your back. No one's looking. You just lay down, mate. Take it easy. Um, yeah, so we need to build an enormous building around this thing to keep everyone safe while they're playing, while they're gambling their diamonds away. And so I thought it would be nice to build a sort of giant sort of panda looking building around this thing. And this, this right here is my muse. You don't need to put them on a lead, the pandas. They, they don't really go anywhere. This one is quite happy just chilling there. So yeah, I'm going to use this thing as, um, as a point of reference. I'm going to draw it like one of my French pandas. And... Uh, we're going to build a giant build around this thing. It's going to look absolutely epic and it's going to be rather large because, you know, trying to make a, a pixel for pixel replica of a panda. Look at that stupid panda spinning away in that hole. I am concerned about that playful panda and how spinny it is. Look at it. But yeah, this is, um, maybe, maybe we're getting close to the height that we want to be. You just lie down, mate. I'll, I'll do all the work. Something like that. It looks enormous, but pandas are pretty chunky, aren't they? They're a pretty big mob. Um, I think that that should be tall enough, shouldn't it? Yeah, it's going to be enormous. I'm not going to exaggerate on that. It is going to be a mahoosive build. So I'm going to carry on building this. And then when I come back, hopefully, I'll have something to show you. Okay, so many, many, many hours later, and I finally constructed this ginormous panda build around this game. And uh, as you can see, we've even decorated it with some bamboo. Really, uh, really working that interior decorating skills there. Uh, but it is looking rather nice from the outside. It doesn't look so great from the inside. but And we've given it a name as well. It is, of course, Pandemonium. That is the name of Water Sheep Down for this season. And we've got some pandas that Sarah's wrangled out the front here. And there's, there's a bouncer panda as well somewhere. That That guy. The angry looking panda is called Bruno the Bouncer. And if your name's not on the list, you are not coming in. It does look pretty serious, doesn't he, as bouncers go. But um, yeah, it looks pretty uh, pretty cool. It's large. It is very large. Um, let's just have a little fly away so I can give you a good view of this thing. Because look at how enormous it is. and chunky it is a chunky panda to, to to make it square like to fit around the game uh it is it is a thick panda look at how thick that panda is there Oof. but i like them chunky so uh it's okay and i know someone else that likes them chunky look at that subtle off-way coloring the tasteful thickness of it Oh my god, 
It even has a watermark. Okay, calm down, Patrick. It's just a panda. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm really pleased with how this game's turned out, except one thing. Pandas don't really work. They're, they're kind of rubbish when it comes to, like, getting them up, them wandering into a coloured area, and then flushing them back down again. Uh, I've tried several different types of panda. They're all rubbish. They're all really slow, or they're just mentally fast, like the playful one. There's not really a happy in between. I even tried getting a riding baby zombie villager stuck on one, and even that didn't work. So I officially give up with pandas. Now, last month we received the terrible news about Technoblade passing away. Um, he was only 23 and he died of cancer. Um, he was a very well known member of the Minecraft community and he will be sorely missed and we all just can't believe that something like that could happen to someone so young um, but unfortunately you know it does and we thought it was only fitting to build a statue to remember him by on the Rocket Cross server so that everyone can um, come and pay their respects to this amazing player who was an inspiration to you know not just me but to millions of other players so here is my tribute to Technoblade.
In the short time that Technoblade was with us, he achieved so much. He won the Minecraft Championships twice, he completed hardcore Minecraft using a steering wheel. He proved himself to be one of the greatest players in history so many times. And um, if you haven't already watched his father's emotional tribute to his son Alex, then I will link that video in the description below for you to go check out. And also, make sure you go and subscribe to Technoblade's channel because he's over 15 million subscribers now. So, yeah, we're going to end that episode on a rather somber note. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.